That's Sir Roger Moore to you. Oh, uh, oh. he's knighted. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he's, he's, he's pretty much a home record yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah, a career record. J. W. Pepper. Sean Connery's really not that bad a guy. <laughs> But we just can't stop making fun of him. I smuggle pistachios! Yeah, That's yeah, what they always yeah. said. Draft, not bottle. <laughs> we have deals on bottles. Okay, bottle. <laughs> bottle. Yeah. Ring. Oh man, nope. freedom, let it ring. Well, sometimes it's hot when it rains. <laughs> yeah. Like well, rain. Oh rain. man, deja vu, rain. man. We are back. Another day, another dollar, another content crisis. Here back with the boys. We've Just to clarify, we don't make dollars yet. Well, we might, yeah. Or ever, might. probably. But it's more of like a richness in heart and soul. You know. Another day, another spiritual dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> if exactly. there's nothing better than another spiritual day, dollars, man, right? It's a positive. Yeah. Okay? We're not here bitching about our money. Bitch my other stuff. Okay? Yeah. We're here to bitch about for like your eyes only. For your eyes only. By James Bond. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Written and directed by James Bond. Written and directed by James Bond, yes. What was the guy's name? Uh, John Glenn. Right? I this believe that. Clark, can you confirm that? Yeah. Let's get I had to have been because we we made a joke of it. Yeah, I know. I just. I, You're right. I kind of just said it. This beard. I was like, I'm pretty sure. You want you want a glass of ice? That's tough. No, John Glenn. Drink it over ice. The <laughs> director. Hey, chill, dude. Chill. All right. I'll but you could put more. you could put the beer in a cup that is full of ice. And then put it. in... Yeah, I just don't really. It's just too much effort. To it's a lot of effort. I mean, it's a Budweiser, so I mean, I don't really know what you expected to begin with. Uh, yeah, like I'm you shouldn't. To, I should. I should have just shotgunned it. You shouldn't have <laughs> even thought like, wow, this is gonna be a good beer. You're right. just like, oh, great. Well, if like it's ice cold, you know, four point seven percent alcohol. I just kind of wanted an ice cold beer. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is piss boss. Don't got none. It's cool, man. It's piss boss. <laughs> nice GTA reference going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so um, we got any guesses on the budget? Man, I'll tell you what. I'm going, going just fifty-seven five. Keeping in mind that Moonraker was thirty-four. Maybe. I was just about to ask what Moonraker was. Yeah. 64. Nope. Is, is 56 your final final answer? It is lower. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what is it? Okay, final answer. 28. Oh, so less budget than Moonraker. Yeah. Well, they didn't, have didn't have all that high-tech space stuff. Yeah. Well, they keep throwing me off because, like, they, they do have these cool special effects. But then, like, I don't know how much it was green screen. But, well, yeah, they never went into like space. Green. All they did was rough up a couple cars and then go underwater for a while. But they didn't go into space in Room Raper either. Yeah, but space effects. Think how much those lasers cost them. Oh, those lasers. Yeah. Those but are, I, I do have to remember, because they, they switched the order of the movies in general, right, because... Moonraker because was to, Star Wars was hot, yeah. So they did Moonraker first. So it still kind of follows that what their plan was was increasing budget with every movie. It's just this yeah, one. yeah. Gotcha. Whatever. Well, uh, made one ninety five point three. Now again, or was on, it point seven? Yeah, one ninety five point three. Now again, we will say, uh, I didn't do this for the first few, but in some of our research, like it is what the total was when they did re releases or whatever. I don't know. You know yeah. how accurate the numbers are here. Like I, I don't know if this these movies did a bunch of re-releasing, but I know those early Connery movies yes. did a lot of re-releases, and that's why it's like Doctor No fifty nine and a half, Russia with Love seventy nine, Goldfinger one twenty five, Thunderball one forty one. So like I don't know if these got re-released a bunch of times, but some of the numbers vary. Sure, that's just what the Wikipedia said. We might be able to find a more accurate box office tracker. Don't care. You know, if well, we if we if we that? call John Glenn, I'm sure he's got those numbers down. Yeah, somewhere. Johnny's got them. I call him. John. Can we can we get John on? Can we get John on the podcast. Can we get John on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Give him a call, man. Uh, okay. So what do we want to do? We want to do. John, if you're watching right now, uh, fuck you. you. <laughs> Content crisis. 184 million. Is that what you Shoot us an email. 195.3. 195. John Glenn ripped off the American people. <laughs> yes, he did. 
Alright, we want to do notes or do we want to... There's not a lot of Bondisms. We want to just fire through those real quick. And they weren't that great. Yeah. By the way, I wouldn't say. Yeah. Uh, there's a car chase. Uh-huh. Take the low road. Not that low, because he flips the car over. What are we doing? That was just kind of snarky. It was he's, snarky, he's, but it's a bondism. He was kind of snarky, this movie. He was snarky. He was snarky. He's, he's, yeah. Uh, there's an umbrella in Q's lab. There's all the gadgets. Mm-hmm. The umbrella gets water on it. <laughs> gets the throat. Whatever. Of a dummy. Not a real guy. Yeah. Stinging in the rain. That's not funny, 007. It wasn't. I mean, yeah, it wasn't funny. It was... Up, up like a little clever. You know the I mean, the lock, the guy lock falls off the cliff in his car, and his head gets smashed. He had no head for heights. Mm. No. And that right there says something too. That's an excessive time difference between those two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like an hour I long mean, difference. Here's my main complaint with this movie. I mean, live and let die. They came in so strong. Yeah, they're like new Bond. Let's go. Still grounded you know, in reality. Bondism, like, bondism, stuff bondism. Cool. bondism yeah. Stuff like a good plot, good movie, minus the 14 minute boat chase. Live and Let Die was fantastic. It's like the best Bond movie, I think, to this point. And then we've just gotten... I mean, you know, Man with Golden Gun, I thought, took a big step back. Spy Love Me was okay. Yeah. I know what you Moonraker, saying. ugh. Yeah. You know. They're like in this but, weird maintenance mode where it's... Yeah. Kind of, they're just, just like, they're just putting content out, easily, and they're all old, <laughs> yeah. and like people are starting to die, and like you know what I mean, and it's kind of getting a little awkward. Like, okay, you like you guys need to. They, they were just trying to keep the, the algorithm going. That's sure, all. Sure, right, exactly, exactly. It's like right now, like the YouTube like face, like yeah, that, it's like it's the same thing. Like, well, that works. It's not really our brand, but fuck it, like that's what works. Yeah. So, the uh, shark flies out of the blown up ship. He says, "I hope he was dining alone." Um, and then he walks into some church, which I get, you know, because MI6 has all these secret bases. Can Bond everywhere. be in a church? <laughs> Apparently, we just found out when they're can. sponsored by MI6. He yeah, can. You know, I, like, I like how the only, only, only like really official person from the church is really just Q or M. Is it M? Q. Or? Oh, it's Q. He pulls M. Up the think beard. of here. Think of it like this, because you always get confused. M. Master. Okay. Master. Q. Q. Uh, Q uh, Quizard. 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 Tech. Quizard. Yeah. Tech. Quizard. Yeah, I'll say Quizard. I like that. All right. <laughs> Uh, so he goes in the church, forgive me, Father, but I have sin, and then Q gives it back to him. That's putting it lightly, 007. Yeah. Do you right, think the old lady who's outside that church is, like, also part of MI6, or do you think she's just, like... Just works at the church, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You gotta think they have, like, you know, civilian contracts. What do you do with it? What do you do? Oh, well, I just kind of rake... I break up the church. Kind of I rake the moon. Clean the toilet, kind of just wipe down the pews. It's a pretty easy job. They pay me... You say pubes or pubes? $150,000 a year. Pubes. Yes. Pubes. Wipe down the loads. Well, there's pubes on the I, wipe, <laughs> I wipe down the loads. <laughs> Sometimes I clean up the blood. Sometimes I clean up the cup. <laughs> Taxi driver. Uh, Alright. Dude, this couch is giving me fucking sciatica problems. I swear to God. You gotta get something that's... I, I feel like I'm, like... I feel like I'm sinking down... <laughs> Sit up, man. It's all good. <laughs> Do whatever you want. If you want to sit back, sit back. You want to lean up, lean up. We, we can amplify audio. It's okay. Listen, man, I want to... I got an amplify I want button. I want comfort. I no, want. You're, you're absolutely right. It's just I don't have like a bunch of money to drop on desk chair. Like I want like big comfy desk chairs that it wouldn't phase anybody to sit in for an hour. You know what I mean? Because then you're sitting up and you're still comfy. Yeah. You're still right. have like thousands laying around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If anybody out there has a couch... No, I'm kidding. This is like... Well, no, I want a couch. It works. It's more of just like a, chairs. You maybe know I mean? should get like a bunch of pillows. Okay, yeah. you know what I mean. Kind of. I could go get you some pillows with that. I probably need like seven or eight of them, man. Seven or eight. That's exactly how many are on that couch hundred. out there right now. Seven or eight hundred. Okay. Is that how much well, the budget actually, is for fact, these chairs? I would probably need that times two because I would need some for my upper back as well. Yeah. How so many pillows would you I need could... to stop being a pussy and let us get on with the podcast? <laughs> I would need zero. <laughs> so let's go ahead and keep moving here. All right. Um, so we open up on Bond visiting uh, his wife's. Hey, Bella! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. All right. We're 
lower the volume on that one for sure. All right. Sure. <laughs> hey, so James right. Bond. You want to get yeah, so James Bond? Here. Let's go ahead and just chuckle on there, buddy. I was just kind of, you know, stalling for time, but let's keep going here. So we open up on Bond visiting Teresa Bond's grave, which is his slain wife from Under Majesty's Secret Service. She was alive from 1943 to 1969. Nice. Nice. Um, with the quote on the gravestone, we have all the time in the world. That's what he says to her when she dies. Um, Wait. That, when, when they get... Remember in Under Majesty's Secret Service, do I have to explain it? You remember. No, I'm just the saying. Like, I'm just Indeed, saying. It's we, like we is that, it's it. kind of a little, isn't that a little pretentious to kind of like be like, oh well, she died, and I'm gonna pick the quote, and it's like what I said when you died. It'd be like if you were dying, I'd be like, Tyler, oh my best friend. There's there's a sentiment you, involved. So number one, with the person dying, you want them to be like, like this is forever. Like you, like I understand yeah. this could be dying right now because of you being dead, but like this, this is forever. We'll always have this. Yeah. So I put that on Tombstone. Right. Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. Sorry. (laughs) I've never experienced a Tombstone, so I don't really know. So what I'm saying is, I don't like that they're trying to keep up that continuity. Like, this is the same fucking guy. Like, we're two Bonds. We're two Bonds past this guy. When you're on the third Bond, in the 12th movie of the 19th year, maybe just go, hey, this character is more of a movie model than, like, you know, a continuous sure. character. Multiverse. Because yeah. you think of this guy, 1962 was Dr. No. We're in 1981. We're 19 years later. Yeah. And you're telling me this guy's still just running around, I mean, kicking ass. Roger overall did look a little rougher in, he in this one. very old, and for some reason the 16-year-old's all over him. Yeah. And, you know, hey, kudos to James Bond, turning down having sex with children before it was cool. Yeah. So, I will say good this, on though. Let me, uh, let me give play almost a little devil's advocate here. I think it's kind of cool how back, uh, I mean, James Bond must have been like one of the first like canonical stories. You hmm. know what I mean? Because yes. it was like true to the uh, true to the books uh, uh, to a certain point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like they attempted to be kind of like, I guess like, uh, you know, cano- I guess canonical, right? Would that be the right word? I don't know. Yeah. If it's canon, then yeah, it's true exactly. to the source content. Exactly. Okay. Right, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. So, I mean, like, it's, it's just devil's advocate. You know what I mean? No, but, I got it. Yeah. It's fair, but, like, to me, it's like at this point, we're in the third actor, you know, we're, yeah. like, but let's say it's like the, the Harry later. Potter series, and, like, they're just like, okay, well, or let's say it's Star Wars. Yeah. Well, the difference is they didn't change who Luke Skywalker was. Three t- it was three movies with Luke Skywalker. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess I know yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. It's different sets of characters. They they have three trilogies of Star Wars and the characters change, but it's not like they're going like Oh, that's Luke. Yeah, like, we also oh, didn't really? forget that guy about has them a different forever. color hair. A while. <laughs> yeah. We're like when was the last time <laughs> she was mentioned before this? Never oh, nice. Well, Spy Who Loved Me, where she's like had a wife, she died, and you're like, okay, really? Bitch? Yeah, yeah, he's like, get away from me. Yeah, he's all, he's get like, away. that's where Bond gets sensitive. Yeah, he's like, oh, you found me. So, but, and again, like, that was stupid too. I yeah. I mean, Roger Moore's different colored hair. Like, he just looks nothing like either of the past two guys to me. He's just like, leave it alone. It's a decent attempt, though. Yeah, they attempt it, right? They attempt to make it at least... But it, it would have helped story. if it mattered and he just stopped banging other women, but, like, it's just so core right. to who the character is that, that it's like, like ah, really... I still care about my wife. That's how we're going to open this movie. Right, and, then, and I guess he did wait a while to bone someone, an hour. <laughs> a, a movie. Yeah. yeah. Roger Moore is a little more reserved, because when he was younger, you know, back in his Sean Connery days, <laughs> he was a lot more rapey. When Roger Moore was <laughs> a younger Sean Connery. Yeah, he was a lot more rapey. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because the thing is, man, there's no continuity in any other part of this fucking series other than, you know, in the first few, they're like, oh, Blofeld, ah, oh, Spectre, goddamn Spectre yeah, and Blofeld, cat. you know, and yeah, and Blofeld has a cat, but then they change the fucking Blofeld and they changed the cat times, and they change, <laughs> probably change the cat, yeah, if I had to go. There's no way that's the same cat. <laughs> no, no way it's the same cat. Um, but... That would be awesome if it was the entire time. <laughs> and then they bring back Blofeld for this fucking thing. Like That's what I was saying. There's no other continuity in this whole series. Yeah. And then they're trying to do the Teresa Bond thing. And then for this intro... Perfect segue. 
they Let's bring go. back Blofeld for this set, this this one, and he's 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 just on a roof with a neck brace on in a wheelchair, and he's got this control panel, and he like the, completely by himself. He's got yeah. no reinforcements. Of course, he gets this priest to send for Bond. And then the priest gives him the, I don't know how you do the cross thing or whatever. Whoa, dude, then, chill, chill, chill. And then he's, you know, he gets in the <laughs> helicopter. The priest gives him one of those. And he's like, that's like your first sign. I'm like, whoops. I don't know the stuff. I don't know the thing. I don't, anyway. It's, it's like the... YMCA. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. So they bring back Blofeld, and he's he's taking control of Bond's helicopter, and it's fucking stupid. It's like Blofeld was supposed to be dead. That's why Spectre hasn't been around. And now you tell me, uh, ten years, twelve, no, ten years later, Blofeld's like, oh hey. I get my revenge on James Bond. Like Blofeld's always yeah, well, been the guy with the organization. Like this whole, or- he's got all these henchmen, and then he just he just shows up one day, and he's like, "I got a remote control helicopter, prob- James. Get in, James Bond." The problem with and- it is that it was supposed to be like a high stakes, like, "Oh wow, Blofeld's back, and wow, he's got this neck brace, so he lived, and he's got the cat." And then they, they have the stupid '80s the, music going the helicopter over it. and the '80s music, and then all of a sudden, I have a lot of, and he won't stop laughing. Yeah. Everything is hilarious to him. Like, look, you give one evil laugh. You know, for effect. One time, you go, ah, ha, 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 You don't keep doing it. He just keeps making these comments to Bond. And he's like, oh, oh, well, help you have a nice fright, Bond. Ah, ha, 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 I imagine him just at his controls. He's just doing stuff, and he's like, I haven't said anything for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no shit. He just keeps laughing. <laughs> one evil laugh. You give one. You know, and he just kept doing it. It was a very cheap use of his character. He had him in a remote control helicopter, man. And I would, they just I would be brought laughing Blofeld, my ass off. You just brought Bro- Blofeld back for... What was the point, man? What was the fucking point? There's no point! Because the, 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 what should have been the intro to this movie right. was what happened... Hey, yeah, John? Did you get him? Did you get him? All right. John, we need to talk. Why Why are we seeing the intro? We don't, we don't know. What was the point? Yeah, yeah we don't know. <laughs> John's dead. Oh, good. Yeah, took care of that. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, there's just there's no point in it because the actual opening scene of this movie should have been uh, the the, the scene on the St. George's where the bomb, you know, blows up the boat and they can't, you know, detonate the attack. We're establishing that's 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 what we've been doing. We've been that's what every intro has been. Oh, problem! Intro song. Enter Bond. Like, do that. Don't do this thing that's 100% unrelated to the story. Sometimes it's... But that wasn't even a cool it scene. It was just cheap and ugly fan service, almost. But maybe yes. it was cool back in the day. I would say that that was... Maybe exactly in 81. Was. Let me say this about the first scene real quick. But I hate it in 2022. And that's all that matters. I think the first scene sets a real tone for the entire movie of how s- these people just like... Like they're not taking the story they're, seriously. They're not even, there's nothing serious about this story. Well, the first scene before the credits... But I'm talking about even the first scene on the St. George's or whatever it's called. Which yeah, St. George's, yeah. Even that one. They're like, they just got the fucking bomb or the, the mine in a fucking... Yeah, they're, they're trying oh, to catch Mia. fish and they go, Oh no, like, we caught a bomb! Stop, stop! It's, yeah. What? Come on now. I don't really know why you would have a secret, like, intelligence gathering ship under a ship that's actually throwing nets out and trying to get shit up with high-tech surveillance equipment that can't detect mines that are literally within... It's like a high-tech shrimping vessel. Yeah. Just, it, <laughs> it, it just baffles me. That's like, yeah, Forrest Gump is probably up top, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, hope I, I hope I didn't ruin your, your British spy party. This one's for Bubba. <laughs> this one's for Bubba. Did we talk about the credit scene real quick? Do we want to talk about the song? Yeah, how that it sucked. Yeah, that was, that was terrible. It wasn't. It wasn't great. The chorus was good, but like everything else was. It was a what? stupid, fucking eighties love song power yeah. ballad. <laughs> it, just, it was terrible, man. I'm sorry, just the way you, I like how you very specific with the genre. A, 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 it was a power ballad. <laughs> well, like you know, because it was like bring up the chart. You know, you know, yeah. like eighties hair metal, yeah. and they have like the power ballads of like. 
Or just to the dramatic like, piano and synth and Yeah, like every rose has a story. Yeah. Walk example, the right? road alone. Like the door. Yeah. It's like the okay, whole yeah, the whole yeah, deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. But you know, and then you, you did, they they did show you some straight up just boobs. Which was cool. Which is fun. I enjoyed yeah, it. Which they've okay. been doing for okay. a couple okay. songs now. I which mean, I've dating back to did Live and Let Die do it as heavily? I feel like Man in the Man with the Golden Gun, it was pretty obvious. There was yeah. one we watched very recently that had quite a lot. Oh well, yeah, recently yeah. I'm just trying to think Live of the and Let Die one. I think was like very heavy on just like the straight up silhouette and not yeah. really any detail. I'm trying to think of the first one where they were just straight up just being obvious. Yeah. Where they're just like Tits You know, and, and it's never like just Before I think it was out of laziness. They were just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, just go like, uh, Well, I'll leave it They were rushing these movies together in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. They really were, man. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, the, the, you know, that was fun. I would like to see the choreographers talking to the women about how to do these, like, slow, stupid dances. Yeah. Or maybe they just do slow motion on those. I don't know. Yeah, I want to guess that there really was no choreographer. Or they were just like, hey, just, a lot of just drugs. do some dancing. We just and need some like, skinny girls to do some interpretive dancing. These were prostitutes they hired off the streets <laughs> that they fed cocaine and were like, let's have a party. Hey, did you ever want to be a dancer? Great. They were Come like, on. yeah, let's dance. And like, we're recording you right now. Here is heroin. And you don't have to sign anything <laughs> because it's fucking 19 whatever. So, so <laughs> just do it. You also don't have any identification. So. Do you have, I don't even think you have rights at this point. It's 1980 something. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Um, all right. So yeah, like I said, the scene that they you know the boat blows up should have been the opening scene, and then Money Penny has been pretty tame for a couple movies. Yeah. So it was about time for her to be a dirty girl again. Yeah. It was nice. I don't think she really did all that much though. Well, she put the lipstick on and she's putting the lipstick on, and we get the the classic. Bond throwing the hat on the hat rack yeah, yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. She sees it in her little mirror and she's putting lipstick. No Bond, just hat on the hat rack. All of a sudden you just hear some rain splattering on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Bond says, Money Penny, a feast for my eyes. And Money Penny says, What about the rest of you? I guess and Bond says, yoga, but I was going to get around to that. And uh, yeah, Money Penny went right back to getting some. She, she calmed down. Or wanting some, not getting well, some. She's yeah. going through. She, she, she went calmed through down. Done with menopause. Well, she now. calmed she's down just... when Bond got married, and then she asked for a diamond ring and diamonds are forever, and then uh, and then she pretty much just chilled out. She was just covering for him from Live and Let Die on. You know, like she's when they a, walk in the house. And she's an elderly woman. She's an elderly woman, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden in this movie, come on, James, fuck me. <laughs> That's essentially what happened. Uh, M. Was in the script in this movie, but if you would notice, if you if you've watched it, um, he was not in the movie. Um, Bernard Lee had stomach cancer. Uh, he died January of eighty one. This came out in June of eighty one, so he was supposed to be in, and you know, sadly, he was not. They Tough break. Off. Yeah. Tough break. So then they said M was on leave, and I'm curious on what happens in the next movie. They keep saying M's on leave, or if they try to replace him, or mm -hmm. what what the uh, procedure is. I don't I don't know when I think Judy Dench is her name. I don't know when she starts starring. I feel like that's not until the Pierce Brosnan era, but I don't who's, know who's that. The female M, like the M that you see in the Daniel Craig movies, um, up until Skyfall. Dude, I don't even remember a single Daniel Craig movie. Okay, seriously. So like, I'm it's all that's fresh good. for me. For my that's eyes, for my eyes only. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know when she pops in, but we'll see. Um, he was uh, 73 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wrote that down. So I really hope I lived to the ripe old age of 73 and star in multiple James Bond films. If I could be in a James Bond film, I feel like that would be. I'd be so. Sick. Yeah, you happy. can you can chill out the rest of your life yeah. if you do it. Yeah. Just something. I mean, like I'll lay on the ground, you know, be like dead body number five. Yeah. Fuck be it. the henchman that's like. You know, yeah. trying to pull his, uh, whatever you're calling, belaying things out of the cliff, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting there with a gun. Yeah. I think this is definitely going to work. Uh, so he's spying on a meeting in Madrid and uh, runs beautiful into. Scenery. Yes, yes, beautiful scenery. Uh, a song 
was playing in the background that's just legitimately about like, hey, you feel my vagina? I yeah. feel your penis. Like it's a, inside of me. It's, it's the whole. It's just a really, really obscene song. You're like, oh, okay, Undulating. cool. I was, I was, I was. With all of, these I women walking around. Hard. Yeah, Harley was had a rager. He had to leave the room. Yeah. Well, I loved it. Just, just the pure concept of having like, uh, you know. Uh, an establishment where you can just have like 50 girls on site just like fucking about. Yeah. Like just in their free time. Yeah. Like I can't imagine they have much of a like life outside of just chilling at this dude's pad and What do laughing. you suppose that pays? I mean... Enough. Or maybe is it they don't get compensation, they just everything is taken care of? Mm. I feel like that would be more sensible. So if you want to go see your family it's like... I'm already dead. What would you call that? Like a, like a like an indentured whore? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think that would be a pretty bad job. That's probably like... I mean, funny like, like uh, that guy from Dirty Jobs. It's <laughs> <laughs> like indentured whore. Like. <laughs> Let's give it a go. Yeah. He's like sucking dick and just like dance, <laughs> dancing at the pool. Mike Rose. <laughs> Mike Rose. Yeah, he has to try it out. And he's like just dancing at the pool. At the party like... <laughs> All right. He has to try everything. Yeah, yeah that's his thing, right? He, he goes and does all the jobs. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah, dirty he's, jobs. he's, he's like, down there sucking he, he's he's like, this so, job. But he, there's sucks. always, like, the person he's on duty, like, showing him how right. to do it. <laughs> he's crying. He's like, I miss my parents. <laughs> we can't leave ever. <laughs> Watch Mike Rowe get into hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> With dirty jobs. Um, so... Yeah, Malini, Melina, who's our our main, our bottom bitch. Our bottom, yeah, our main, our main lady, because he's got another uh, lady this movie, night, right? Uh, Melina, Melina kills the man that killed her father in the plane. Uh, that's an important part of the story. Melina gets dropped off to the boat in Greece, where her father is uh, investigating the St. George's that blew up, and uh, she drops in to see him. Quick disclaimer. The, the guy that delivers her then circles back and, you know, his plane is apparently armed with machine guns. Mm -hmm. Which was parents. not noticeable until that until scene. they were firing. Yeah. Yeah. Quick disclaimer, this story is um, kind of a mess. It's... I don't like it. It's not... I'm high, so... It's probably, it's probably a lot harder for me to follow, but I don't think it's that hard. I don't think it's that easy to follow. What the fuck yeah. really is going on here? There's there's <laughs> more there's more to follow than you'd want. It seems like they're all color coded by. And not in like by... a good way. Not in like a oh this one was challenging to follow, but it was very rewarding. Right. You know, just the like Jesus, was great. there was a lot going on. They kind of yeah. like, and it all sucked. <laughs> it was terrible. They focused mostly like... on like setting in this movie. They're like, let's just have all these different battles. Where do you want to go now? Madrid. Right. See, and that was the problem too. Like at some point, I was like, "Wait, where are we? Are we in Madrid? Are we in Greece?" It's like who gives a shit. Like, like well, the subtitles <laughs> say they're speaking Greek, so we must be in Greece, right? right. I sit yeah. there, I'm like, I feel like a genius, and I'm like, "Well, that's Greek letters." So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. So sorry. my my favorite part about that scene is the fact that she's a better spy than him. I mean, he's driving in his Lotus, just gets picked up by the cameras. They immediately know he's there. He gets captured. The most conspicuous vehicle he could have selected. White with red racing stripes. Yeah. And it's no just big deal. Just cool as shit. I did look And cool. he's, he's in, uh, she's in the bushes, you know, in the trees. and like With her crossbow. You know, with her crossbow. She gets the kill. And then he's running out, you know. He only gets away because she distracts everybody by killing the guy. Yeah, because he got caught. With a crossbow. He got caught. I love the fact that she's the better spy yeah. in this one. Never been a spy a day in her life. But no, I think that's the fun. That's always, but that's a, the definitely fact a that Bond, Bond thing. just sucks as a spy. <laughs> Not only that, but like he always finds these women that are like shell hunters. <laughs> like, fucking this chick is good with a crossbow. Like really weird attributes. Yeah. One lady's a carny. Like it's just these aren't like <laughs> ladies a carny. This, this isn't, these aren't like these aren't mothers. They aren't, they, aren't, they aren't, like, women with, like, ambitions or anything like that. They are just, like, disposable income for James Bond. Like, he writes them off every year. <laughs> income? income? Yes, come. <laughs> More like come inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. uh, and he also has the worst fucking car alarm ever. It says burglar protection, right? And so the dude goes to Waxed break the it. window. It explodes. 
Why would that be your car alarm? Because the whole purpose of a car alarm is, hey, I don't want my car stolen. Right? But then if you just blow up your car when someone tries to break into it... You don't have that car You now. still don't have the car. I left my phone in there. <laughs> yeah, you gotta think, like, he was probably like, shit, like that... That's convenient. <laughs> the insurance company's not gonna pay for that. Talking about leaving a dog in a hot car. Not leaving a dog in that car. She was like, sorry, James, you have to pay out of pocket for your cell phone. Well, that's even worse. Like, he's going to the grocery store, he leaves his dog in there, and they're like, oh my god, we have to get the dog the air conditioning's on, but the air conditioning's on. He's like, no, no, everything's fine, don't do that. And they still <laughs> smack it open. There's eight fatalities because people were gathering around. James just quietly walks away. Oh, they cancel him because he killed his dog. <laughs> James Bond canceled. Over dog murder. News at six. <sighs> oh, James. Anyway, car chase is ridiculous. She has some little fucking love bug or yeah. some shit. The the Spain version of it, I guess. Is this where they flip? This they the flip. Okay. Amore bug. Which I just wanted to say Amore. That, like Amore bug. Amore. Get it? You get it? I guess I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you said it was kind of creepy that the guy like turned around and was like, "What did he call him? Love bug? What the fuck did he call him?" When they were like, he looked oh, back and he was like, "Yeah, like amore, amore." Oh, oh yeah, amore. oh yeah, amore. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that one was funny because the vibe I got from that scene. Man, we should get to it when we get to it. Yeah, let's yeah, let's go in order. Let's go in order. Because yeah, otherwise, we're just gonna circle around yeah, complaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to say about the flip real quick, man. Yes, yes, um, yeah. That's was, where we are. That's fine. okay. okay. Um, if this was in America, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like that. It would be like if they flipped in New York City, they'd be like, "Hey, call the police!" Woo! Like, but these people were like, they had their fucking like straw hats on. They were flipping the goddamn car. Yeah, yeah. Got them out of there, dude. Then they, they, they got the push James, started. Him. James, yeah, James got, got in the push car. Start. and was like, "Push me, <laughs> push, push!" And they were like, "Hey!" Just absolutely they willing to and, do. Yeah, yeah. it's like man, it's so neighborly. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah, it's a nice vibe. Whereas the other guys, they're blocked by a bus, and they just start shooting a gun in the air, and they're like, <laughs> okay, yep, sorry, yeah. my bad. James Bond is like, teach you a lesson about manners. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably like, <clears throat> compadres, come, come, <laughs> flip, flip. <laughs> El flippy dog. Oh, flippo. Yes, yes, el flippo de coro. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank no, you all. Where are I you speak going? English. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Yes, very, this is. For me. I have to go now. I'm gonna. Can you say, guys flip the car? Can you just flip it? Can you? Flip? Yeah, we were working on it, man. You're gonna break my balls. You're gonna break my balls all <laughs> no, day. We'll flip the car. You're hey, gonna, mama, flip the car. You're gonna flip my fucking car. <laughs> but yeah, then he calls over to the other people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, come on, flip the car. Flip the car. Yeah, flip the car. <laughs> all right, man. We flipped the car with the neighbors. Yeah, so the chase continues, and they're in the stupid little car. And of course, he manages to get away from these three Mercedes that are chasing him. In this five horsepower vehicle. In the five horsepower, it's practically the Fred Flintstone car. And uh, they're, they're flying down this hill. They're flying down the hills. They're going over bumps. This car goes faster backwards than it does forward for some reason. It's very impressive. And uh, time and time again, the henchmen pull up right next to him. And won't just shoot him. Yeah, like you they see, just, you see, like, ha -ha, got you, you see now. three separate dudes with their guns, Home like, guns staring. oh, James <laughs> Bond, <laughs> like fucking shoot. Yeah, got one guy taking pictures on his phone. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's James. About to kill James. Taking a TikTok. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Just maybe shoot him. And then, but of course, all this ridiculous shit. Ha he outmaneuvers him. And, like, that little car survives going down all these fucking hills. That is an all-terrain vehicle. <laughs> yeah, you know it. It's a marvel of technology. So, um... So that ends. Thank God. And, uh... Which is the, this is the first of many... Of many Long, drawn-out scenes with the, no real resolution or really... Purpose. The really, really, purpose. Like, none of these scenes move the plot in any direction. It's just, like... Just let's just do some shit, and then like then we'll get to a scene where it's like exposition. Oh, now we're gonna move the plot forward. Hello, exposition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just like oh, okay, cool. Like anyway, sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. I can't wait for the end <laughs> to wrap it all up. <laughs> the thing is that 
the one positive I think you could say about this movie is, hey, we don't need a bunch of shit about about uh, you know different things about different countries and the, you know the, the what's his the politics and everything. This is Italian they just and pretty much, That's <laughs> right. They were pretty much like we're here. Bad stuff go down. Boom. It's the hey, 80s. What's going cool in the mob? Get on some skis. Go. Boom. You know, go. Like they just they're just like, "Hey, get in a car. We're going to film it." You know? "Hey, get in the submarine. Get We're gonna What's film it, it called? The labia? Yeah. <laughs> get in the labia. <laughs> the Neptune is what it's called. Anyway. When when was the mob hype? It's got my, my weird comment made, made, got me thinking though. When was the mob hype? Like Scarface and Goodfellas and the it's Godfather. Seventies, eighties. Yeah. You think that's why this was kinda like Italian and Greek and shit? I mean Godfather was seventy I don't remember what year it was. I just watched the offer, you'd think it'd just be burning in my head now, but Well Anyway. Either way, this, uh, this yeah, they liked the whole Greek gangster thing. They're they're very into this. this was 1972. <laughs> there we go, 72 for the Godfather. So Bro, I things are to, hot. I wanted Sequel. to make this comment real quick because uh, yeah. when I was when I was younger, my dad would always watch these movies, and like they would be from the 80s, right? And they, he would always tell me, he's like, "Oh, this is a bad 80s movie." Yeah. Every time he was watching a different movie, I'm like, "What are you watching?" He's like, "Oh, it's just a bad 80s movie." Every time, right? And like when I go when I go and watch an eighties movie, I started to realize like, oh wow, they all kind They're of all bad. dog shit, right? Yeah. They are really bad, right? And <clears throat> this movie had all of the symptoms of a bad action movie, like a bad eighties yeah. action movie. You know what I mean? Like just this the the, the fucking little the little scenes were like, oh, it's like you know, comedic. If this is comedy, right? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, man. This is not time for you to slip in fucking comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are we to the point where they he does the goddamn chase on the stairs? So that's a lot later, isn't it? That's a little later. Yeah, lot later. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We got like an hour. Yeah, oh, God. So <laughs> that whole thing concludes, and uh, you know they're in the hotel. He gets her a flight. All this bullshit, and she's like, oh, "This isn't over. I gotta find the." Guy that hired the guy that killed my dad. And I was like, oh Jesus! Baby. I haven't killed enough people to avenge them yet. Yeah, and so James is <laughs> James, dead eyes, though. James is like great. James is quoting Chinese proverbs now. Yeah, he's like, "There's a Chinese man that said, you know, if you go for revenge, dig two graves." Where'd you learn that? The fucking dojo. Yeah. Well, don't forget, James Bond's a ninja. Yeah, he's a ninja. Because all of this <laughs> continues, so you only live twice. Um... So James gets back to base. He's got a, he's got to identify Locke. I'm like, oh, why don't you use the identigraph for 007? Oh, this oh is yes, smart. the identigraph. <laughs> like, and what I love about that scene so much was like the look on his face was like this was the first time he heard about the identigraph. Like he looked around like kind of cautiously. He was like, well, yes, of course. Yeah, the identigraph. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> for me, you know what I'd like to believe that was? I'd like to believe it was Roger Moore. Like reading, like he had read the script and he was like, "We're not really gonna do like an identigraph, right?" And they're like, "No, no, no, we'll change it. We'll, we'll take that out. We'll take that out. All right, we're gonna rename oh, it. It'll yeah, be, it'll it be different." His lines, yeah. but he didn't know. And yeah, like, like it, it stayed in their lines. It's right. just his version so of the script. Like, didn't say it, so then they said it, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm surprised." Yeah, Roger Moore was the like, identigraph. Yeah, is what? Yes, that machine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Fine. And then they yelled, Fine. "Cut!" And he was like, "What the fuck? What the fuck was that?" You told look me. at my script now. Look no, at yours. There was Why are they different? Identigraph. <laughs> I don't know. So the stupid identigraph. Uh, Q still hates 007. Which cool machine? Which cool machine though? We didn't cool really machine. It, it does. It, it's a glorified sketch artist. It just takes a lot longer. They were yeah, down I there for like, like six I hours. Like the sketch artist would have been quicker. I like, think so. They always seem and to get it you... done really fast in movies. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, so that's like, because they're not going to spend 45 minutes watching you sketch out this dude's chin. I, I, I <laughs> no, no, that's fair. <laughs> he, he, the dude's just sitting there with his chin like that. Now it's a little rounder. I think, uh, but I do think the sketch would have been faster because they're like, they're sitting there typing shit in and he's, you know, 
And Bond's like being a smart ass. Like, like, I'm banana nose. <laughs> but the nose is all long. He's like, a nose cue, not a banana. I thought you knew how to work this thing. He's like, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, to its credit, it prints out the exact picture. But really, in theory, isn't it just going through fucking mugshot? Like, right? Because how does it just get an exact picture of the... Well, I'm kind of a mugshot expert these days. So, um, I would say I don't think that's how it works, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. So, I will leave it. It's plausible. plausible. I don't know, man. I'm just... It, See, it they worked. were using it advanced worked. AI technology based mm-hmm. off of the parameters that they entered in. So, they defined the basic outlines of his face. That's why when you saw the hair, you like part it down the middle. And then you saw like a, like a texture of hair going over it. Because yeah, yeah, it was yeah, assigning yeah. that texture... The hair slot yep. in 1981. In 1981. Cool. Cool. So, cool, 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 cool. All right, so then he's got a contact, and who fucking cares? Some other place. Of course, the Italian dude's named Luigi. Bella, please stop. Uh, all right. Damn, dude, you gotta get your dog in check, man. No. She'll figure it out. All right. All right. Tyler hits his dog. No. What? <laughs> Why would you? Don't worry, we can edit that out. We will edit that out. <laughs> Tell it was not his dog. <laughs> he might. I don't know. Soft I'm, reset. I'm not, okay. I'm not here all the time. Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> Pause. What's wrong with that? Pause. So I'm not sure how old BB doll is supposed to be, but that's that's our little, uh, you know. A lot of times we get an innuendo name. Yeah. But this is what we get in this one. And baby it seems doll, to be baby wasted doll, on a girl that, like... That he doesn't have sex with who's underage. Yeah. So, like, and I get that it's, like... Like, it's usually assigned to, like, a love interest. And, like, from her perspective, she was... She's very, very you interested. Know, love interest, I guess. But it seemed kind of wasted to be on her rather than someone who someone was, like, a little more relevant to the plot. Yeah. yeah. And relevant to the plot, Like, yes. uh, Melina, maybe. Yeah. Also, they said, I was doing some reading on her. They said the naming of her character may have been somewhat in tribute to Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl wrote... Fuck. I can't remember which Bond movie, but he wrote the script for one of them. I want to say uh, that it was You Only Live Twice, but don't quote me on that. We can look it up at another time. Yep. It's not Somebody out there is quoting it right now, and it's like, God, I don't know what to attribute this God. to. Yeah. They yeah, got the tweet button. They're sitting over the answer like, damn it. Who is it? Yeah. Uh, so they said that might have been a tribute to them, and then I don't remember what the other part was. So who fucking cares? So she was also a legit figure skater. Um, she won silver medal in the uh, novice level U.S. figure skating championships. Is she American? Come on, man. You gotta poke the hole in the research that I didn't get. Who gives a shit? She was was 23 at the time and they didn't... Yeah, probably. Yeah. She was 23 at the time. That's how they distinguish she's American in James Bond, by the way. No, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) See if they're American. That works. That works. Uh, So they did not specify that she was any age. You read that yeah, when she I was, was looking it up, it said that they intended her to be 16 years old. And, and I guess the way that they, like, made her talk, like, they did go for very specific, like, right. mannerism, I guess, to make it seem like she was kind of childish. James kind of hinted at it a couple of times there throughout. But yeah. it still seemed like it was just weird. Yeah. Hey, but can I make a... I want to make a quick comparison that you guys might just want to take out. But he was kind of, like, acting like Michael Jackson a little bit. Because, hear me out. Listen. So, like, you know how, like... What's the timestamp? Okay, yeah. I'm just saying. Maybe he wasn't acting <laughs> like Michael Jackson. Funny as if but you know how, part. like... Okay, so listen, listen, listen. <laughs> you know how this whole Michael Jackson thing, like, uh... You guys... You guys what Michael Jackson Well, thing? like, the whole thing where it's like, oh, well, did, like, did he rape these kids or not? Right? Right? Right. Okay. Right. So, like, if you watch the documentary, right, a lot of the criticism is like, well, why did it... Why, if why did the parents let these kids just hang out with Michael Jackson? Right? Yeah. MJ was cool. And James Bond, it's kind of the same thing. The parents are like, okay, yeah, just go hang out. Go, hang go out play with, with James. Go play with James. <laughs> right? And she's sitting there kissing him on the face and like trying to suck his dick and he's like, no, thank you. Like, 
Michael so what you're saying is there's going to be <laughs> a documentary, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, there, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, you don't like, understand. She was playing a 16-year-old. Right, right, she right. She was right. a yeah. legal I mean, was She was definitely a monster, okay? I'm just saying, like... Oh, here she is. There she is. Hello. She's been you're on some bullshit. On the table. Yeah, you're, okay. you're on bullshit yeah. right now, weirdo. Yeah, calm down. Yeah. All right, we're here, dude. All right, so... <laughs> uh, the beginning of that scene made no sense. Uh, who is the guy that joins him on the... Oh, no. Sorry. Figured that one out. Uh, but the whole thing... So he's running away from the blonde German guy, who's a sharpshooter. But yes. can't seem to hit James Bond skiing down the mountain. skis, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, you know, James ah. Stick gets shot. And you know, he's got one stick, and he pulls off better jumps... Expertly navigating... Than this German dude. This mountain, yeah. It all, it, at, when I'm... When, when this, when the fucking mountain first appeared, I was like, "Oh, cool, like ski stuff." And you thought that I was like, "Ugh." So you were like, "You kind of know what's about to happen." I feel I felt that energy. You were like, "Oh, yeah. you already know what's about to happen," but I didn't. I was like, "Oh, this is about to be a good scene." No, it was the longest fucking annoying. I don't think I've ever saw a ski scene that was lit though. I mean, like I, I feel like every- any, <laughs> if it ever lasts more than like two and a half minutes, like it has overstayed its welcome. Well, that's the th- I think every per I <laughs> I feel like every filmmaker. <laughs> that's gonna have a ski scene in their movie is sitting there going, okay, okay, I know, but hear me out. This one is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be better. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and then they just literally splice in that clip from James Bond. They don't even make their own scene. How many, they just put it... Yeah. How many movies has has there been a ski scene at this point? Do we have a count? I don't want to pull I Secret Service all the time. Yeah, that was, yeah, um, movie. we had one at the beginning of Spy Who Loved Me. So we'll we also had it in this one. I want to say that's the extent of them. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, that's a good amount so far. They've been epic except for this one. Yeah, because this is like the henchman that we were talking about last night that can't hit shit. Yes, yes. And it's like I thought you were supposed to be a sharpshooter, bozo. Yeah. So he chased him down. So then there's this big ski jump that all the general public is going on. Right? Everybody's everybody's doing it up. And so he goes down the jump. And this other guy is like on the middle of the jump. <coughs> and he's like, ha! I'm here! And then he punches him. And you go, well, if your whole purpose in life was to kill James Bond, would you just come out there with your fists and just start throwing oh, hands? Ski jump? I gotta say, during that scene, I was like, I was almost like kind of nervous because as they're going down the thing, it has like these like, you know, like broads that go down for the frame that kind of outlines it. And like, James is like right next to those. And when he got hit the first time, it looked like his leg like went in. Mm. And I was just fully expecting him to get caught on that rod and just like snowball to death. Sure. You were worried like, about James Bond, well, man. Well, that's a good, that's a good thing. Man. Yeah, shoot, that's good. That to was be, my uh, first mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my first mistake. But it's yeah, like I saw him man. going down. I was like, oh my god! Like if he hit that thing, like, I was worried about probably the stunt actor who was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like if he hit that pole, like he's fucked. Yeah, they're gonna have to get a new one. <laughs> so what didn't make sense is the fact that you know the guy joins him and he's just like, how about a punch in the gut? And he's like, okay, like you could at least had a knife on him, you know, get a something, flesh wound man, or something. something, or push him into the thing that would have broken his cankles. You had options. There were options. There were options. Just sit on the side of the ramp and fucking pick him off. Boom. Yeah, but Whatever. general public. General public. And the plot. Don't forget about the plot. Don't forget about the plot. The whole Lots design of, of this mountain is also bad shit, and maybe. What you have kind of goes into it with well, the next part of this chase, but like this is an Olympic ski jump, and the public is just lining up like it's a basketball court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they do it in Finland or where the fuck they were, the Swiss Alps, but yeah, they do it a little different because that shit's crazy. They just so. send a dude down, wait thirty seconds, and send the next dude. Yeah, he, and he's sitting there over the clipboard like da. But it was da. it was just next. bad shit because next. like every time. James hit a ramp, mm-hmm. it was like all of a sudden now in the way of like where people were just chilling. And it's like, how is this mountain and this course designed that every single ramp involves like now skating across the balcony of another one of the lodges or some yeah. shit? Yeah. Like it just, it blew my mind. I was like, how is every ramp in the way of the general public? Yeah. The obstacle of humanity. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's so profound. <laughs> 
So he gets down the jump, and for whatever reason, the dude's sitting in the car and he's aiming, right? But for whatever reason, it's like he didn't know it was a ski jump. Because then when James Bond's in the air, he's like, oh shit. Like he you like know? flinches, like his whole body just recoils from, oh, James is airborne. He yeah. can fly! <laughs> yeah! He gets out, he comes around, and then he's aiming again. And then you look, at, you look around the ground before the scene, you know, before it starts. And there's like this little, flat open pretty though. flat place, yeah. you know? And then all of a sudden, James gets to the bottom, and there's another ramp on the side. And James hits it perfectly. Dude's airborne, and he's like, ah! He's yeah, it's all flies scared. over the fucking car and that's parked at the... The fucking airtime he gets over the car, over the fucking banner, sitting over a rock, like the whole thing, and just off down the mountain. Didn't make any fucking sense. It was like uh, Tony fucking Hawk, man. Tony Hawk! Or Sean White. I don't know any skiers. I just, you know. Sean, Sean Hawk Bond. Just skateboarding. Or not skateboarding. Well, like, you know, uh. You know any skiers? I don't know. Nope. So, I don't really care. James Bond, that's the only one I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Sean Connery. I've known, I've known him to ski. So, you know. <sighs> I don't know. This is just a lot. It's a lot, dude. This when you suck. miss one shot, you can't take another shot. That's the other thing. Is like you get one chance. Just you don't. Get ah, it. God! I'll get you next time. Damn it's like it. you have four shots left, <laughs> and then you can reload. Even guns have more bullets than one. All right. <laughs> What's next? So, you know the dude. So you know Bond is on the ski table, or some table on some somebody's balcony. Yeah. Slides all the way down the table, down the hill. <laughs> And then you see the guy from the past two movies that, you know, he's looked at his drink when he sees Bond in some sort of goofy vehicle. It was just in a great Moonraker. Shot. It was the gondola that can drive on land. In Spy Who Loved Me, it's the car driving up out of the water, and he looks at his alcohol every time. But they don't even show him long enough to really recognize that it yeah. was him. Like I thought it was a bystander until you mentioned it. Yeah, I would have. If you didn't mention this shit to me, I would have yeah. never noticed. Well, and he didn't even <laughs> do the same thing. He was just like, huh. Ah! Like, at least you gotta have the guy. It's go like you didn't look. have the extra three and a half seconds to have him look in at this a bottle. Or... Crazy, too long movie. <laughs> you couldn't have just. I would have immediately cut it out of the the. The water scenes. I would have probably saved. Oh yeah, the water, water scenes too. God, yeah. I hate. Mm, we'll get to it. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of water. We've talked about water on this show. <laughs> this one thing this show talks about it's water. Well, we're big. And oh wait, did we talk about um? Ice? No, no uh, oh, fucking well, helium. Did one. we talk about helium? No. Not quite. We're not, we're not, we're not, helium. We're not to helium. Oh, sorry. Spoilers. Also, spoilers. in that chase, <laughs> this is the second time that Bond has encountered Luge in this in this series. Yes. And the fact that James Bond has not had the Bondism of, like, what a Luge or some shit like that. And we've had two Luge situations. It's very disappointing. Very disappointing. His bondisms are weak as fuck, dude. And this well, yeah, movie, there was only the four weakest, of them. The weakest they've ever been in this movie. It's like they, they shot the whole movie and then like, did we have any bondisms? <laughs> fuck. Go reshoot like four scenes and we'll call it. Yeah. I mean, I, probably the... I'd have to... I need to go back and like get all of them. Like in Dr. No. See, because I think they more start... It starts ramping up like in Goldfinger, you know? The yeah. first two... There's, like, here or there, maybe, but not quite as heavy. It, it's not become a trope yet. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah. <sighs> okay. So, all right, so I guess the burglar alarm was... All right, so then, so James goes, and he sees BB before he, he leaves to Greece. She greets him with a kiss to the chest, and a, I love you, my sweet dick. Yeah, tells him Didn't tells him I could eat her phrase, but yeah, <laughs> she could just eat him up, and it's like James looks pretty old. Like, why why are you so attracted to this man? She's got daddy issues, obviously. She leaves. They talk about Papa. Eric Krieger or whatever the hell, and she leaves. Um, 
And then these fucking hockey players come on the ice. And James oh. is just... And it's like, just James is walking... Oh, what's this game? You See, know, just walking this, by. At this stage, like, this is when I knew that, like, the rest of this movie wasn't going to yeah. be great. Because I started yeah. calling things. Because yeah. they're like, oh, it'd be stupid if these hockey players were henchmen. And they don't just do a scene transition here. Yeah. And lo and behold! Yeah. That's a testament to what I was saying earlier about, like, the bad uh, 80s movie. Yeah. Bad yeah. action movie. Because this is... It's, 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 okay, so here comes something silly, like, oh, they're, it would be like a bunch of fucking bunnies, dudes in bunny outfits, like, coming out, it's like, okay, whatever, cool, like, and of course he beats them up, like. Yeah, well, the, the fact that they're all in skates, and they all have weapons, with, you know, they have hockey sticks in their hands. But like, there's a lot of the weapons. fact that Bond, well, they have <laughs> blunt objects. How's that? Sure, I mean like they can't. Like yeah, they're just I mean, bullying him for a couple minutes. They're yeah. Like oh, like they just, just check him. And yeah. <laughs> he's just like, damn. They're like practicing. They're like, dude. So they're like Saturday night when we have our game. This is about to be great practice. But like the the implication of that means that they had to have trained hockey players on the payroll. To be capable of that specific isolated event. You know, they didn't just get randos and dress them up in hockey gear. Like, those had to have been hockey players that are just on the payroll. And the fact that James, in his fucking normal ass shoot, maybe there's Did we talk about the jacket? Oh, we did forget about the jacket, yes. (laughs) So, Bond, let let me get through the hockey first. Okay. The fact that Bond, maybe he's in snow boots, but, like, the fact that he's just walking around on ice, and there's these dudes on skates with blunt objects, and he wins yeah. against the three guys. He did and he get his ass kicked all. for a minute, but... He got his ass kicked for a second, but, of course, he dodges the ice skate, and he ends up throwing them all in the hockey goal. And the buzzer, and the buzzer, the buzzer goes, goes off goes every off. time. Cheesy. And he's like, Haha. Just cheesy. He gets on the Zamboni, takes out the third guy. So it's like, if they're henchmen... The fact that Bond just kicked their ass so bad that they're all unconscious? I don't think so. Maybe the guy that got hit with the Zamboni. But, like, they all even had helmets. Like, the, yeah. like, their equipment is designed to keep them conscious after getting railed. Yeah. Nice. So the fact that... <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> so the fact that he did that was just ridiculous. And then, you know, he just moseys on out of the fucking hockey ring. <laughs> yeah, he, he just had like a little jog a little or hustle. Out. Like a slight hustle. There wasn't a jog. I'd say a little hustle. He was yeah. like... He power walked. Yeah, he just, power, yeah, power just had a little, little pep in his step. Little pep, yeah, a little pep. He felt real good about that fight. It's like, it's, it's just ridiculous. So like, what was the... Like, why didn't those guys have knives or guns or something? Was if those, if it's three dudes in ice skates with guns and it's Bond and mm. boots... He's done. And, yeah. how, no, and how quickly did BB and her trainer get out of there that they heard none of that none commotion? Of that. Yeah. And also, when we move on to him getting outside and finding that Luigi is now dead, like, like they observe nothing. Yeah. Like, they hear nothing, they don't see Luigi dying or anything. Like, well, that's the know definition what James, of blinders. James' occupation is. Like, they kind of know why he's there, you know what I mean? So, like... He's they're kind like, of bound to get into a fight every once in a while, so they're kind of like, oh, like, uh, he's, just he's, James, working. James, he's, work. he's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. It's like he's like like a stay at home or like work from home type of thing. It's like, oh, don't bother him. When he's, he, he's at work right now. He's working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so d- d- that whole thing was ridiculous to me. Uh, so then we'll get so the coat. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice until I was watching with you guys. Is that he's Jason, up there Jason pointed out. meeting Luigi. What? No, I pointed out that. Oh, you pointed out the B. He reminded me just Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but Bond's up there when, we, when he first meets Luigi. And he's got this little B on his zipper. B for Bond. <laughs> he's got a little B zipper on his winter coat. And then he had little ones. Yeah, he had the tiny one on like, the breast yeah. pocket. And then I, I realized like it was he, when he's sitting at the table talking to Ari. And then he's got the little B zipper here, little B zipper. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, you're supposed to be a spy. And he's just wearing like the dweebiest. And like, you're just like B for Bond. <laughs> I mean, he was he was looking stylish on the mountain, man. You gotta look stylish on the mountain. I, I thought stylish. that jacket was dumb. I don't know about you. It was guys. dumb as fuck, <laughs> especially when you're being a spy and you're not. Like people aren't supposed to know yeah. who you are. Well, like, he's got embroidered like I am a spy. <laughs> yeah. And it takes no one any time to figure out that he's a spy. Like, within five minutes of him meeting anybody, five minutes of, like, movie time, you know, somebody's always like, Oh, spy, are you? <laughs> it's like, ah, 
You got me. James just walks in, sits at a bar, lady comes up. So how long you been a spy? <laughs> yeah. He just gets up and leaves. He's like, I can't. I just can't. Yeah. So, I guess the hockey goal was kind of a bondism, right? Ish. The just hockey the goal. Whole, yeah, just the fact that like he threw the guys in the goal and just and like like, like that would have been a great time for an actual line for of a bondism, line, yes. but but that in itself was almost a bondism, I yeah. suppose. But we move on from there. Luigi's dead. Rip. He uh, goes and sees Melina in wherever the fuck, and he talks to her. He's like, all right, I gotta go see a guy at a casino about a thing. And she's just like, yeah, I'm sad and stuff later. <laughs> and so he goes to the casino, but then she comes to the casino and she sees him leave with some lady and she's jealous. And then we never bring that up again, so what was the fucking significance of her being in the goddamn casino? Who the fuck knows? But basically he talks to Ari. Ari tells him Columbo's bad. Columbo hears it. He's like, hey, whore, go home with him. And she's like, all right. Okay. So she like goes countess, home with though. him. This the is countess, a yes, my bad. High yes. ranking whore. So the countess goes home with James. Or yeah, to her house and then James oh, sleep. We see a nip. I think there's different ranks in the horse. Mm -hmm. Like there is. Like, yeah. This is the Admiral of Horse. Yes. <laughs> General Whore. Commander Whore. <laughs> Are we, uh, are we missing the scene where uh, they were trying to run uh, Molina over with the... Not yet, not yet. No. Okay. Wait, not Molina. The blonde? Where the blonde gets run over? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. You're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah. So, Molina he sleeps blind. with her. Yeah. There's a slight nip deal. That's great. fun. If you go frame by frame, it's a good boob. Um, very brief, but it's there. Should we go ahead and rank that now? Best tit have sighting. Been, have we been had. ranking boobs? <laughs> Best tit sighting we've had, right? Uh, I mean, I'd give Jason a, didn't get to see seven, Spy nine, Who Loved Me. Was it the seven, Spy nine. Who Loved Me? No, 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 no. We're ranking in comparison to the other tits we've seen in Bond. That's what I'm, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So Overall, where is it ranking? About, about a seven, nine. No, not in like, you don't give it a one out of ten rating. You go, you know, was that the best tit we've seen? Oh, no, no I mean, it wasn't the best tit I've seen. No. No, oh. in Bond. That's what I'm saying. In no, Bonders. it's not the best tit in Bond I've okay, seen. Okay, what's the best one? Uh, Spy so Love Me? I would say it was the, the, the title sequence with the planes, man. <laughs> Alright. If you're not going to yep. take the series. No, I swear. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not going to take the boo ranking seriously, we're going to move on. No, I swear to God. That was probably... That, that's what I'm thinking of, right? Where they were like literally like fucking yeah. swimming through the sky and they yeah, were like, yeah. you know... Alright. This was just a, a, a nipple through, some, a, through a fucking phone cable. I mean, what was this? Or I think it was the best. The bed sheet or whatever. 90. You get, you're giving this a 90? 90. 90. 90. Her 90. Oh, sorry, that was even the line. That was even the line she gets. She's always like, my 90 oh, slipping. My, my, <laughs> as the, it's just wrapped around her boob, my 90 almost slipped. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm saying it was, it was a, it was a good boob. But so was her accent. <laughs> That's what he said. She's like, I sorry. forgot which one I was using. I'm sorry. It, you see, because, like, okay, we're not going to go in. All right, so. <laughs> no, I want to hear your justification for the boo. No, no, man. no, no. It was a good boo. Uh, so, Nip. It was a good boo. Uh, he get, this is an hour nine. This is the longest I think Bond has gone without having sex. I was shocked. In a movie. Hour nine minutes before Bond has sex. Um, I, I think, I think they need that, that earlier, because I wasn't hooked until the sex scene. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then I would argue that uh, a couple minutes later, you're unhooked. <laughs> um. So then, the next morning, they're going for a walk on the beach, as, you know, uh, newly found lovers do. And these jeeps, these all, uh, doom buggies, what would we call them? Sure. Doom buggies are on the beach, chasing after them. She gets taken out hard. <laughs> it, was, it was rough. Like, it's just, the worst like, way. hit by the front, her head smacking against the, the front windshield and rolling off to the side. Yeah. It was not a grace. Yeah, <laughs> it was not a graceful death, which is kind of a shame because, like, I don't. I feel like you know most women get dealt with a little bit more gracefully for sure. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they. Uh, I don't know. We Moonraker. That girl got ate by the dog, so that was a little rough. That's fair. So. <laughs> I, love I mean, this. you didn't see it though. Yeah. Where this is the worst. Now, this one, we just run her over. I think was, that might have been the worst woman death we've seen in this one, where her head just, just bam, like, body head. That's, yeah. a, I mean, that was that's bad. a bad way to go, man. <laughs> it is. You know she was semi-conscious here, and James like, oh my god, are you dead? <laughs> oh, I think just still breathing. Wait. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> put, some, put some sand in her mouth be like, this will take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This should soak up any of the blood. <laughs> yes. Put the sand in her mouth. This should soak up any of the oxygen. Oh, I mean gentle. blood. How gentle is that? Yes, just a little sand in your mouth and that'll be enough. <laughs> Sean Connery's really not that bad a guy. <laughs> but we just can't stop making fun of him. It's too easy. It's just so fun. Yeah, it's character, it's character man, you know? It's, uh, it's perfect, man. We just can't stop. No, because he's, he's so memorable. We just can't stop he making is, fun. Man. Nothing better. Can't stop making fun of Sean. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so the nip, and then... <laughs> two buggies. She gets smashed. Uh, and this is where we get to be just like, all right. And then, what happened after that? I'm so to, I'm for to some remember. reason. Okay, so it was the dove guy. The guy they call the white dove is Locke, right? He <laughs> comes to the beach to kill James. Mm -hmm. And his, he had another guy in another Jeep. Bond wasted that guy. Locke, he did not waste. Or no, he didn't waste that guy. But he did get wasted by an arrow. So then, it's, of course, you think, oh, it's Melina, and then it's not Melina. And then it's a bunch of guys with white doves on their shirts, and you're going, but the white, so it's the white dove? And then, apparently, they all work for Columbo, and they were like, to Scott, but the, but why? I don't understand. It got to be a little complicated it at some point, because I was like, who, what, what is the teams here? That's what, I was, that's what I was really confused about. I didn't really know who was, like, I learned we find out the Columbo comes their buddy mm -hmm. but that's only I, I know i know they have this whole exposition scene coming up but I, it wasn't until the very end when colombo is like i'm pretty much like cheering with him yeah that i was like okay so they are on the same team so they're buddies now so they're cool. okay okay yeah cool. great no, that's great. <laughs> yeah, like, Thanks right. for that. No, cool. we uh, cool, 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 at an cool. hour and thirty-five. I now know what we the now teams know are. the comrades. Cool, yeah. got yeah. it. Thanks, John Glenn. All right. <laughs> so, so yeah, they have this exposition scene. They have the exposition. Ari Cristados is bad. Colombo equals good. Um, I do kind of like the way that he got James to trust him a little bit, though, because he gives him the liquor. And then has his little bit like oh, gives him his gun. Well, back. you don't trust me. And he's got all the eyebrow shit going. He's like, yeah, come on, what? Come I smuggle pistachios. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always yeah. said. Cigarettes, Guns, something else, something this, else. This pistachios. pistachios. Like, you never heard of a pistachio smuggler? So the pop of pistachios. So the pop smuggler. So not that bad of a guy. Yeah. But then he like give him the drink. James won't drink, and then he give him the gun. And, and he's he like, oh, you give him a gun back. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah. So that's fun. And then they uh, they raid some fucking ship, and uh, all hell breaks loose. There's a bunch of sh bunch of guns going off. There's a bullet hole in a big barrel. James is like, <laughs> Oh, yes, opium. <laughs> this is what I, mean. I was so confused because I was like, Who, what what is going on here, James? It looks like everyone. But this is how they do it. They dress people in black and dress people in blue. So I was like, okay, I kind of know what's going on. Yeah, if they had not color coordinated outfits, I would have been very lost. Oh on. yeah. I probably didn't get the teams, and then James is like, mmm, raw heroin. Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so James That, that part up. was funny. It's like, James just like, raw <laughs> opium. Well, yeah, like, I would have I would have liked more of him to actually rap, but instead he's just like, mmm, raw opium. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just, if I was Sean Connery, I'd feel like he's just, ah, oh, yes, I love opium. There would have been a whole scene of him, like, it would be like him tripping. Or him just him just like gathering some for whatever you know he's just like, <laughs> like, he's, like, like he's just like dabbing it with like his handkerchief or something he's like yeah he's just like I'll that's what it was yeah I was like trying to wipe it in his pocket like the guy he's like I'll take this for later just kind of put it in his pocket yeah yes raw opium or he's just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> alright so Sean always has Narcan on him so he's he's will <laughs> be fine <laughs> uh yeah so that goes to hell they don't catch the guy but then james chases him because the guy blows up the thing they got another big floating bomb in the boat there's a c4 he you know makes the whole thing explode boom boom james chases him and then <laughs> the hilarious shot comparisons of the dude in the car driving up the hill and then just cutting back to james going just like and then, <laughs> Oh my god. 
<laughs> running up the it stairs. It was like, so fuck? dumb. Like, it took away all impact of the chase. Yeah. And, like, not to mention, I also just don't understand, like, the architecture here. Because how is he going on stairs, but this dude is still... Yeah. Like cruising his way up, but like we haven't seen a bridge or anything. It's like he's talked about, he talked about getting out horsepowered in the little yellow car in the beginning scene. Yeah. Talk about getting fucking out horsepowered. Yeah, you are here. jogging. You're and jogging up some stairs, Roger Moore. This is like a uh, just like a, in a bigger picture. This is almost like kind of like the same symptom of why we got JW Peppers. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't that we needed. This weird, goofy fucking character, or these weird, goofy. Wasn't scenes. the hero we wanted? It was the one we needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like, need wanna, some weird, slightly racist comic I relief know, like, where the, for about fourteen minutes. I want to know where like the comedic relief like formula is for why we need these like goofy fucking scenes, and at what point? Because that like I didn't, we didn't, I didn't need this fucking scene. No, and he's it, not cool it, enough to have these like moments of like. I don't think Roger... I think Roger Moore's fallen off at this point. He's fallen off. Live and Let Die came in so strong. I love Live and Let Die. And then ever since then, I just haven't liked it. He's too old. I think... It's not... I don't even think it's his fault. I think his movie was just bad. I think Moonraker... Like, was just, like, a badly... And Moonraker actually wasn't that bad up until they went to fucking space. I would argue that he did such a good job in those first couple of movies. Yeah. There's a reason why... We have these ones. We now. have shitty... Because they're like, oh, well, anyone can write this. Yeah. They're like, yeah. We, they're like, Roger Moore does such a good job. Yeah, they're like, if we can get four people writing movies at the same time yeah. and then just have him shoot the scene... Like the equivalent to how... Like, the what's the saying of uh, so many monkeys on typewriters? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get the works of Shakespeare. Eventually. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the equivalent. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was thinking I'm kind of like shaking up a gerbil and making it like... Pick like a random like like <laughs> like just a subject and they're like, okay, uh, <laughs> like okay setting, uh, Havana Cuba. All right, and then it's like a weapon. Uh, well, let's see, and it's just a a oh, nuclear bomb. Okay, oh, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's only nuclear bomb. 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 Yeah, <laughs> just the big list saying nuclear bomb. Sterilization <laughs> gas. Nuclear bomb. Nuclear <laughs> bomb. Nuclear <laughs> bomb. <laughs> 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 Greek underworld nuclear bomb nuclear bomb nuclear bomb what even was the big- something called an A-cat nuclear Dude, bomb nuclear what, bomb nuclear that's bomb that's what I'm saying like I was just about to ask what even was the what would it do it coordinated it was something about coordinating all the British's like military weapons so like it can tell the submarines to where to fire missiles and so essentially nuclear bomb <laughs> A cat system, whatever that is. It's, it's AKA, like weapon guidance bomb. and controls. Like it could choose targets and make them fire, like sure. from yeah, 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 a thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's all coordinated. Yeah. It's like something called an A cat, aka nuclear bomb. We'll come director. back to this at the end, by the way, because it comes up again at the very end. And I have a question because we'll get there. <laughs> so, all right. So the shot comparisons. Uh, what reason other than the plot was there for her to leave the tank down in the ocean when James comes and meets her because he, you know, he does all that shit where he kills the dove. Yeah. That's where the bondism happens. The guy, he throws the pin in and then the car starts falling because of course that's the straw that broke the camel's back. But then, yeah, I but think then James he, he kicked it. Kicked yeah. it yeah. So, which felt good. It looked like he enjoyed that, which was nice. Yeah, because he killed his friend Luigi that he knew yeah. for all of a day. He was actually like kind of pissed about that. He so was, it was mad nice that he killed see... his friend that he knew for a day. Yeah. Because yeah. James uh, gets attached quickly. That's why he got married in the span of like a week. And uh, He's kind of on Majesty's Secret Service. Probably yeah. got like, like womanizing issues. Well, it's because Daddy wasn't there. Daddy didn't care. Exactly. To change his underwear. Wasn't it seems there. he doesn't care. Take him to the fair. <laughs> 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 Alright. So here we are underwater again. God. I hate... Because Melina <laughs> has a submarine called the Neptune because her called dad the labia. was fucking loaded. It's called the Labia. <laughs> and, uh... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> It's just like a Are we the helium yet? Yeah, we're basically there. We watch the thing. They're talking about going under there, how deep they are. For some reason, they need helium, which, look, maybe they do. I'm not a, if you're a underwater guy. You're to this, shoot uh, me an email uh, telling why me why you need, need helium, helium at 600 feet below sea level. Because I'm too exhausted with this movie to look up why I would need helium. Maybe you but need they to get back both. to the surface. 
Uh, due to this event, though, they both have I mean, a helium addiction and, yeah. almost instantly. Yeah. So, so they're under there. They're going to recover the egg cat. Cool. Now, here's the deal with me. This is my thought process. Okay, because, spoiler alert, in the end of the movie, James throws this fucking egg cat off the off the cliff. That was the question I was about to ask a second ago. Yeah. Continue, sorry. Okay. So he throws the egg cat off the cliff when the Russian guy comes to buy it. Mm-hmm. When the Chill boat so goes <laughs> down... <laughs> when the boat goes down... Okay... There's a switch to blow up the A-cat. He Destroy was it. This He's close. He's this close. All the water's rushing in. I'm not going to blame that guy. It's not who I am. He could have tried harder. You would think he got that there's a moment when... Because he's handcuffed to the thing. So where are you going? You'd think there's a moment after all the water rushes in that maybe he just... You do like, your job. Yeah, I don't know. But hey, I'm not going to blame that guy. A lot of water, a lot of explosions, a lot of... Not. A lot of scared. I'm going to blame that guy. A lot of gone. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to. That's why you'll be at the top. (laughs) That's, yeah. So, the whole intention is like, hey, blow it up in case of, you know, break glass in case of emergency. Whatever. Boom. So, James fucking ass goes down to the boat with Melina to grab the A-cat. Sure. There's a bomb down there. He unhooks the bomb for some reason. And then he hooks it to the guy in the suit that comes... Because there's a guy in a big fucking hunky suit with all the Just claws. Big Daddy and, from Bioshock. Yeah, was. basically. <laughs> yeah. And, like, conks James right out. Like, he just... And James like, oh, shit. Incapacitated just, for, like, 25 he seconds. He just lays down for a minute. And then he took a nap. And then, you know, she's... Her helium hose... I mean, I'd know a helium hose when I see it. <laughs> Her helium hose is like punctured, and there's like that's when the withdrawal started taking place because she was useless after that point. Uh, Also, before they went in the submarine, we have eight minutes. Only speak when necessary. And I was like, "Well, why didn't you say that before we put the suits on?" There's a lot of unnecessary. By the way, by the way, they did keep the eight minutes. They stayed within eight minutes. They did. It felt like it was within it. Uh, They did not stay within the one minute of the bomb time, though. But all right, so back to the A cap. Let me say real quick that. He said, let's conserve our oxygen. And they jump out of the submarine. They jump out of the submarine. Let's conserve oxygen. And then he's sitting there reading the fucking instructions to like a Lego. Out loud. To like a Lego instruction manual. Like, he turned that thing 45. Yeah, it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. He doesn't talk reading the map. But, well, first, of course, he has to get his bondism out. The shark comes out. I hope he was done alone. Oh, ha, 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 James. So then he walks in and he's like, what is this? His bondism was literally a waste of oxygen. Yeah, like, what are you doing? And then he gets in there to the A-cat, and he's reading how to defuse, like, what, what... Like, okay, how to cut the wires. Blue, red, green. Okay. Cutters, please. Hold this. All right. Uh, cut one, cut two... Shut the fuck up! You should be dead Just because you job. won't stop talking. You, the, the eight, Okay, all right. So... Worthwhile noting too, yeah. um, being underwater is the only time that like she looked like normal and good. Yeah. Because yeah. like this whole movie, we didn't really touch on that. Uh, she just looked like odd. Like there's just she something about her. She had a banging her. body, but like, but like her the face, eyes, the eyes were dead. She's always dead. She's not an actress. Yeah. She's a good looking gal, not an actress though. Dead yeah. face. That I mean that's that's fair to say. Good looking, not a not great at acting. She was not good at acting. Yeah. But when we were at least in the underwater scenes and, like, you were pretty much just looking at her eyes, whatever she was doing, she was, like, staring hard as shit. Yeah. But I, that was the only time in the movie I was like, wow, she's pretty. Almost reptilian. <laughs> I mean... So the A-cat. <laughs> <laughs> so Bond takes it with him, and he straps the bomb that's supposed to blow up the A-cat <laughs> to the guy. Okay. Maybe it's your only weapon, right? So you get out. And you got the A-cap for some reason. And then you get in a submarine. And then... Then another submarine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And smacks them and like, starts ripping apart wires and hoses. And things are happening. And then this thing, apparently, despite the hoses and the wires getting cut, still Fully has the functional. power... To, yeah. you know, knock it in there and surface. Get it wedged like, in the the hole of the ship or whatever. Yeah, so where all the things on the outside just, like, for vanity, 
I don't know. Well, you one know? of those was a hydrogen tube. It was the or CO2. Helium tube. The CO2 oh, the thing. CO2 tube. Because they're like, try shut off the CO2. I'm trying! Okay, good. <laughs> so they get to surface. She's just looking for a helium. Just yeah. Like, I don't yeah, I don't know. She's helium. helium. She's a helium addict. She's like, yeah, I'll look for it, James. All right, so we're to surface. We're on the boat. The boat is overtaken with the enemy. Okay, great. They now have the ACAT, which... Alright, fine. They wanted the ACAT. That makes sense, but Bond, why didn't you destroy the ACAT? Whatever. The whole point of this movie is the ACAT, and then we get to the end of the movie, and he just throws it off the cliff. That's all I'm saying. What the fuck? Alright. So we're on the boat. The submarine has surfaced. They're getting out. They overtook the boat. So... What was the point of sending the guy with the fucking suit on to go down there and intercept them? They got the A-cat for you. They're coming up to the surface. Just let them grab it. And then there's a submarine. If you just let them go down there, get the A-cat, come back up to the boat, they're going to bring it to you. I will say, at least as far as sending the guy in like the suit thing down there, we didn't know for sure that James wasn't thinking of destroying it at that point. So he could have been sent down there to secure it before James could potentially destroy it. Sure. Everything yeah. else other than that is bullshit. Why, why you would send either of them there, just, just to make it take longer yeah. for them to come uh, up to take the ship over. is ridiculous yeah. to me. You've already taken the ship over. And then we have this whole big thing... Where instead of just shooting these two fucking people and throwing them in the water because no one's going to find them there. Instead, we're going to tie them together. And we're going to... We're going to drag them around. We're going to drive around in circles. Drag them around for But here's the deal. We're not just going to drive in a straight line so that inevitably they drown because they're just tied to each other and they're just getting dragged by a boat. Why don't you just drive in a straight line and eventually they're going to run out of oxygen and they're going to fucking die. You know what I just thought about? So, they're on a decent-sized boat, yeah. which means a decent portion of it is going to be underwater. Yeah. And in all the scenes of them being dragged around, they were scraping on coral reefs that were not very below sea level. So, how are they not hitting these reefs, but still getting James to get scuffed up on them the entire idea. time? Nothing about that. That's a good observation. Nothing about this movie makes sense, Jason. <laughs> we're not going to talk about either how he said bandage him up before we put him in the water with the sharks. <laughs> we want and then we leave didn't. their feet loose so they're good bait for the sharks. We didn't want them to bleed for the sharks. We wanted them to kick and scream for see these sharks don't like blood. No, they're no, passive. No, yeah, these are Which we guys. learned when James is surrounded by a cloud of blood and, and the shark goes just... and then a guy falls in and the shark's like, "Oh, what's that?" Good Fucking. bait. That's good bait. <laughs> yeah, that's good bait. Yeah, where's Cristados? I gotta thank him. Yeah, because like, they're not bleeding. They're not ble like, dude. Fuck this. All right, so uh, they he makes it through the torture. That's he makes it through. Like, which would it, like this would have been a really cool. This would have been really cool. Like, if it if it had any stakes to it. Yeah, but this didn't have any stakes to it. And if really everything didn't take so long, like all of these scenes were just drawn out. They drag like, him through the water, and then of course they always stop and they loop around. And so James has time to like, okay, take a deep breath, and he goes under there and he saws the the. I know this looks weird, <laughs> but he's he's his, imagine my hands are tied together and he's got a rod, and then he's sawed on a rock and he gets the rock. The sharpest fucking the sharpest rock. rock you can find into the ocean. He's like, I put that there just in case. Well, and they planted that, too, with the air tank. With the air tank, yeah. yeah. Uh, which I mentioned, so we are... Pay attention. Um, are, you, are you still there? You watching? <laughs> you, you listening? Watch and listen. All right, so... Then he ties the rope... They stop again, of course. Of course. And then he ties the rope around some rock. And then... It snaps. Yeah. The boat's trying to pull it. The little buoy they have in the water flies up, hits the guy, hits the henchman, and he falls in the water. The sharks eat him instead of Bond. Bond and the lady, they fly. They, fly. they swim over to the stupid fucking the temple she's working on. She's working on a temple. Some underwater temple, I guess. There's a whole thing. 
She was like vacuuming sand off it. Like, all right. <laughs> this is the kind of gals that James Bond is into. Mermaids and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she left an air tank there. And what I, like I said earlier, for no other reason but the plot. And so then they go, they get some hits of oxygen. They go up so, go up, up to the boat. And then they're like, oh, damn. They're like defeated. They're damn. Bond's in a robe. You know, he's like, oh, thanks. Uh, well, they're off to wherever the fuck. They have the A cat, and we'll never get them now. And then the parrot saves the fucking day. The parrot's like, A cat to Saint Cyril's! A cat to Saint Cyril's! Like, and again, and they, they I hate it when I can call something because it would yeah. be stupid, and then that's the thing that happened. I was like, does the parrot know the secret? Or whatever I worded it. I was like, yeah, does like the parrot know a secret or something? And I was like, oh, they weren't just saying. I was like, are you Saint Cyril's? Yeah. It's like, I can make a fucking James Bond movie. Yeah, no, we, like, literally, I want that to be an episode where we we just sit here and like, alright, let's write one. Now, I did run that idea by you earlier for the parody, but... (laughs) Yes, yes. That's for another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, we'll do a podcast where we write, like, ten Bond movies. (laughs) We just write as many in an hour as possible. Yeah, because that's what they did. That's what they did. I I say give me an hour, I can give you a good one. Yeah. Real good. I can give you eight. (laughs) Yeah, I can <laughs> yeah. give you a good one in ten minutes. That's how they found the right storyboard and everything. That's how they found the right. Just a bunch of dudes. They'll be like, "I can do it in five minutes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were looking for efficiency here. And Whoever like, has the most bonds done by out, lunch, yeah, he can crack yeah. out like four or five bonds a day. He's a good worker. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sharks just gonna swim away from all the blood. Oh, don't worry, the sharks got him. Uh, and then he's like, what? And then they kind of wrap it up hastily. For all the fucking fucking around that they do, I'm like, oh, now we gotta go over here, because this. Oh, now it's this in Madrid. Oh, it's over here in the Alps. And then they're like, alright, we gotta go to St. Cyril's. He meets up with Q. Q's like, alright, hey. Yeah, we had a huge transition from just the, okay, we know what we need to do next. I know somebody. And then it's like, you know, hours of, like, assembling the team, getting supplies, them getting there, is just in the next frame. And then they're, like, walking through... Who, who walks through with hoods? There's a group they were disguised people, as monks. Monks, they were, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're all walking through disguised as monks. Yeah. And then her line is, you know, we're just five men. She's like, and a woman. Like, oh. All right, cool. It's the 80s. <laughs> Listen, yeah. It's, it's the 80s. It's 1981. <laughs> <laughs> so then James, I said the rock climbing was intense, yet... Crazy boring. He, he, we just show Bond plant his fucking carabiners everywhere on this cliff. And just then, watch Cliffhanger. If you get to this part in the scene, no, yeah, it's, or in the movie, just go turn thing, on Cliffhanger for like eight minutes. He does this whole thing with shoelaces, where it would be cool if it was just you know he had super shoelaces that zipped him all the way up, but he literally had to do like some Boy Scout shit. I have no idea how the shoelace works. I don't works. understand. He well, like think, ties it to I his foot and ties it up he here. He did a slip knot so that way when he pulled it out, they created tension and he could like lift himself and then the other one, or like you know he would go backward where like the one can go. So like, like he'd support he his would, weight, like, yeah, and like slip himself up. Yeah, it would probably work if you were like really if like, the shoestring really, was like, infinitely yeah. durable, not sure. just converse. Which I'm pretty sure he wears. I was like, is he just wearing Converse? Like, yeah, I don't think yeah. Converse laces will work, but, like... I, again, though, I've never... I'm not a fucking combat Do you think they put that like on that. the shoelaces after this movie? They were like... Please uh, do not attempt. Yeah, like, like yeah. you know, like, you've a carabiner and they're like, not for climbing. Like, yeah. all the shoelaces is just, like, not for climbing after this movie comes out. That'd be funny. I'd like to look that up, though, because that might, uh... I might, it might come in handy one day, man. I might, yeah. I mean, mount, might be uh, mountain climbing and... Look up that knot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the dude just walks around. He's beating these hooks out of the out of the cliff with his gun. The whole which you know, reference the taxi driver. They <laughs> say, "Hey, that thirty-eight, you can go out and hammer nails with it all day. Come back and it'll sh- still shoot straight." <laughs> and their so, old boy was just smacking the just shit out of it. Shit. But he never the shot gun. the gun. He kicks Bond down from the cliff instead of just going like, "Hey," he was so <laughs> determined. He's so determined to have him fall to his fall. death. Yeah, he's like a uh, he's like a Skyrim character with like ten charisma or like max charisma and like nothing else. They're like, hey, nah. something about you. Come on, get up here. Like, and like charisma, <laughs> ten lunk. Yeah, yeah, mostly has yes, luck and charisma. And you mentioned like 
as many times as like the hooks broke and he just keeps dropping. It's like, dude, just like just get off. Yeah, just... like because because at, at that point, like with how much progress he was lost, it was not outweighed by his fucking shoelace apparatus yeah. that he was climbing up. But somehow, I mean, like you could you could touch the ground right now if you just. But somehow take your foot he, out. he catches up and he throws his little fucking you know rock knife at him, and then you know boy falls and. Fucking they're like James, and then you're like, no. It's Despite that guy. wearing none of the clothes that James was seen going up. <laughs> <laughs> Despite like, just look. <laughs> yeah, very distinct. That's him. What yeah. he's wearing. So then, of course, they, there's a basket that <laughs> drops all the way down the cliff it's for supplies. And they come up and yeah, of course. <sighs> so then the guys come up, and you know the A team's here, and. Um, you know. The fucking henchman that they got trapped in that room too was like completely useless. He's light. an arrow shot in the heart, and they're like, "Hey, shut up!" So they they gag him and everything, and he's all struggling and bleeding out. Probably she like dresses his wound and shit. Yeah, yeah. And she then, dresses his wound, and then which I'm just like, this is a weird point to like not want to take revenge on literally everybody. Yeah. Yeah, she's like all about killing everybody, and then she's like, "Not this man." Which was weird. Like, she dressed his wound, and then two seconds later, like, butts him Columbo, in the head. Columbo. Columbo. Yeah, just. Two minutes oh, yeah, butts, yeah, he butts him in the head with a, uh... Quiet, you! Yeah. He's apparently, like, not in front of the lady, right? I don't know. I don't even... Uh, show where he's not dead. So... But that guy definitely is. <laughs> that guy is dead, though. Um, so there's a big thing. He fights the... Uh, Fred Dick he, I don't remember his stupid <laughs> fucking name Who cares He kills that guy uh, Throws him off the cliff Cause they're like, Haha You lose uh, And uh, You know Instead of that, the, the, Columbo's henchman Has a chance to just Shoot Cristados And he's like No I've got him And like this Out of shape old dude That's eating pistachios All the fucking time <laughs> Just busting ass He's just like <laughs> You know, like, run it, like... And all the while, like, he's trying to catch up with them, he finally catches up, and they're kind of scuffling a bit, and he's just, like, whacking the A-cat yeah, around, like... Yeah, the thing he's like, about to sell, he just keeps whacking Like, the, the first thing with. he did was, like, whack the other dude in the nuts, and then he's trying to get away, and then he's, like, falling over and scraping on the ground and everything. Like, no regard was made yeah. for like, this. hey, as long as it's in this guy's hands, he's gonna... He's gonna pay for it, right? So Columbo, like, kind of falls down the stairs or whatever. The guy gets all the way over there. James gets the A-tag from him. The guy pulls out the knife. Well, first, first, Melina's got her crossbow. Because she's fucking chewy from Star Wars. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's about to shoot him. And then James gets in the way. Even though he's been killing motherfuckers all day. And he's just like, no, Melina, it's not the answer. <laughs> It's like, this is like the eighth dude she's murked. Like, there's yeah. no going back. And he's, you know, she's like, she's like, move, James. Like, all right. And he's back to the proverb. Get ready to dig those two graves. <laughs> and then dude pulls out a knife. He's going to get Bond. Columbo, like, gets up. He's all, he's like, acted like he's got shot in the back or something. Yeah. Even though he just, like, fell down some stone steps. Like, yeah, it hurt. And maybe you're old and you're just like, oh, he might have broken that something. Hurt. He might have broken something. But he, you know... Nonetheless, he's got a good knife throw in him. Gets yeah. the guy in the back. Dude falls over. And then he does like a dying gesture. He's like, huh. and then he's like, ah. Yeah, like it, down. like it looked like we were expecting him to be dead after that or something. But no, and instead, fucking BB dolls waiting on him. And it like, looks like BB found a new sponsor. But first, James is about to hand the thing to the Russian dude. And then he goes, ha ha ha. Throws it off the cliff. And, uh,. He goes back to the thing we were saying before. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Fucking stupid attack. Goes back to the boat. Yeah, what you got? So just what kills uh, me in that scene is, like, at this point, like, James, like, knows this thing needs to be destroyed and nobody should have it. So what does he do but throw it in a place where he has no way to confirm it was destroyed <laughs> no it's beyond not. usability? You know what I mean? Like, in a branch. Like, it's, 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 there's no way it wouldn't be, you know, completely destroyed but like yeah yeah confirmation seems important yeah it was a bad it was a, just bad a reckless James Bond move as we've established many times before James Bond is a terrible spy one of the worst bad. Uh, so they go back to the boat and uh, 
they're kissing in robes. And, uh... So this is what I was saying earlier. It's like, there's only one confirmed bang. Like, likely he got laid after they did their little night swim, but they're sitting there kissing. She's like, you know what I'd like, James? And he's like, more helium. But... <laughs> and You really gotta kick the stuff. <laughs> and she's like, a night yeah. swim. And so then Bond's getting called on his fucking radio watch, and he's like... He hangs it on the thing next to the parrot. Because it's become a trope in these movies with Roger Moore that we're going to uh, radio in, we're going to see Bond having... Like, high-ranking officials are going to see James Bond having sex. Mm-hmm. And uh, they didn't quite do it. Instead, they had the high-ranking official... They had the Prime Minister talk to a parrot who said <laughs> to give her a kiss. That was and, That was uh, funny. But the only times for your eyes only was relevant to this stupid fucking movie was the folder Bond was handed when he first hears about the ATAC situation said mm-hmm. for your eyes only. And then at the end of the movie, she takes the robe off and says, and for, she your says for your eyes only, darling. And um, that was this movie. <laughs> Jesus wow. Christ. That movie was a fucking shit show. Yep. It's not my favorite. That was probably my least one so far. And yeah. That's where I'm fu- I'm kind of struggling in my head because And you know what? I had this I had this written down 6-5. And watching it the third time, I really just saw everything. You know, that <laughs> I it's, hated. it's less than 6-5. And I think I think it's a 5. Man, I don't I did I don't know, like that's the thing is like but what's the real goal here with these Bond movies? You know, is it just... Because, like I said, I feel like the only positive here is they learned, like, hey, no one really cares about all this political jargon. Let's just have Bond do some cool shit and, you know, just get in, get out. Yeah. And make our $100 but million. Dollars. The problem is, is, like, having the political stuff gave it some kind of meaning, even if some of it was kind of convoluted or wrapped yes. up in things people weren't understanding. And, and, and not giving anything to fill the void. Like, there wasn't any meaning in like any of the actions like none of this mattered it didn't matter like none of the characters who are involved had to be the ones involved like this could have happened to anybody yeah and it, it just it, nothing none of it fucking mattered no. and especially destroying the thing at the very end so it's like ah oh, the thing we've spent two hours, two hours on. and on trying to get that you could have destroyed two 15 or 210 yeah that you could have destroyed an hour in it's like and now you just destroyed it it's like oh like Thanks, man. Why was the movie this long? Uh, yeah, as, and as also both the, of you uh, said at multiple points, like this could have been a forty-five minute movie. Yeah. And I'm I'm sorry. Who was it that met him on the helicopter? Um, at the end. Oh, some Russian. It was just like, a, yeah, it was a Russian guy. And we've seen that guy before. He keeps recurring now in these Roger Moore movies. It, I think it's the head of the Russian intelligence agency because okay. he's the dude that Agent Triple X talked to. And the spy who loved me. It's like, of course, she was named Agent Triple X, but sure. Um, yeah. But he was surprisingly chill about that interaction. Yeah. Which I feel like anybody in his position would have been kind of pissed. Yeah, like, like I would have thrown James off of the mountain probably at that point. Well, I think that they have a lot more. They were they work together in some of these things. And spy who loved me. Yeah, they work together in these types of things. In yeah. Russia, and it's a lot more complicated than the Cold War, really. Went on. Just I think get on Am- you got Amazon Prime, right? Just get on and fucking just, just pump through it one night, you know? Just a bunch of movies. Tried. When you get to Spy You Love Me, it's like, you see, it's like, I mean, Spy You Love Me is kind of cool. Spy You Love Me is definitely better than this fucking movie. Yeah. Well, like, I try and take, like, even if, like, the whole movie, like, as its cohesive thing, like, it just doesn't do it for me. I try to enjoy, like, pieces of it. Yeah. This one, just ridiculous all over, and I'm sorry if someone out there liked this movie, and I just shat all over it for an hour 39. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm going, I'm going on with 5-5. Five, 5-5? Five. Five, five. Yep. Yeah. I was going to make a comment. Yeah, go ahead. About it, but let me make my uh, let me yeah. make my overall kind of like it, in conclusion. Long, in conclusion, too long didn't read. You know what's funny? I gave Moonraker five and a half too. But really? With this seat, that now I feel like I go lower. Because you hated this, this one, a lot more this, than Moonraker. Because I, I feel like Moonraker was at least 
a decent movie up until they went to space, and then God. it just got stupid. Mo- you know what? Moonraker needs to be like a six and a half. Can you bring in Moonraker up? Yeah, I think so. This is an official changing. You only get one changey. Yeah, Moonraker is six and a half, and this is five and a half. And then oh. hopefully Octopussy is not terrible. <laughs> okay. Listen, we got... What's your comment? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, um... The whole overarching movie is just bad. The story is bad. Agreed. The opening sequence is bad. Super agree. The first scene, bad. Super agree. Um, let's see. The acting from the lady of the night that he chooses, bad. Um, and then, like, the bad 80s shit. Like, the, the weird... Bad, the I cheesy got, music with The music definitely scene. needs to be something that's made comment on. The could have been so... Action scenes could have been so much more like there's could have been so much more gravity to those scenes I mean, a- exactly if, without the actual like the music, crazy music. synth pop An shit just, scene is yeah. supposed to move the story forward in some fashion in this movie those action scenes didn't do shit those fighting scenes where he's just fighting hockey players it's there for you to go wow James Bond's so awesome yeah exactly yeah. they're just a vehicle to, to get to the next location James needs to be at yeah, yeah. so uh yeah, I mean, this is the worst one we've watched so far. So, um, and we watched Did Doctor a lot of no. contemplation, man. Let me uh, let me just see real quick. What did I give Moonraker? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you yeah. give Moonraker? Row H. Yeah, I see. I see. 6-3. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go 5. I'm going to go 5-6, man. 5. Yeah. No, 5-7. Five, 5-7, seven. Five, seven. Five, man. This was dog shit. I yeah. would rather... Agreed. I mean, I'd rather eat... Eat dog shit? Yeah, I'd rather eat... I mean, I don't know if I'd <laughs> eat dog shit, man. But no, I think I'd rather watch this movie, for sure. I'd rather eat, like, uh, like Chef Boyardee cold than watch this movie. Chef Boyardee cold ain't that bad. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. It's that's like it's, fair, actually. That's yeah. not... But would you prefer it to anything else? No, but... If, if you, you told me hungry, eat a Chef Boyardee cold or watch this movie again... But if this was on the I'll TV... I'd probably eat this thing cold. Yeah. yeah. If I was in jail and this was on the TV, I'd, be, I'd sit there and be like, yeah, this is a 5-7. But I'd also eat a fucking cold thing of Chef Boyardee in jail. Well, I'm watching it. Sure. That would probably make it like a 6 two, well, so. Talk about having your cake and eating it too there, bud. Hey, man. Listen, man. It's having it. your Sammy's Chef that, Sammy's that chemicals that, you know, are going off when you're buying a fucking yacht, so. Yeah. What would you give for your eyes only, Jason? Uh, this is a five flat for me. Oh. I got my rose wrong. I gave Moonraker a six. I'd change the Jason. Whoops. Jason was a 5-5 five five for Moonraker. I was a 6. My 5-5 five five is still accurate. So, Alright, so erasing that, what did you say? 5-flat. Five 5-flat. Five okay. You're the middle row. My bad. It's weird. Your Moonraker is still 5-5. Five five. He says This is 5. 6, 5 and a half. Alright. And you watched Dr. No recently. Uh, we ranked Dr. No out of five right there in the beginning. So what would you give Dr. No out of five? So, just as a, a quick preparation for how I felt about these, yeah. uh, I haven't watched the, the early James Bond movies until this point, um, now that I've watched some of the, uh, you know, Roger Moore ones. Um, so everything I was leading up to was expecting Sean Connery to be just a terrible, awful, goddamn person yeah. fucking and romping about, you know, various You're not places. Too far off. And that is mostly what happened. But what I found was that I was like it was all very endearing to me. Like I enjoyed watching Sean fuck about yeah. for, you know, nearly two hours in these movies. Um yeah. so I'd I'd say if we're putting it in a five scale, I would have to say like like three seven five. Yeah. Out of out of five. On your personal drive. Yeah. For reference. Just give him the 375. I mean, I, I am. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say something about the 75 in there. No, I was just saying for reference. Okay. So Harley gave it a 3. And I said 1 because I was saying, look, like, I'm sure it's a great movie at the time. But as far as, like, now, I mean, this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> I'd absolutely watch it again. You know? But, I mean, actually, I feel like I almost. I'm not going to change it because it's what I gave it at the time. But I would watch Doctor No before I'd watch this one. Oh hell yeah! 
Like I said, I like just going back and like having kind of this novelty and like this precondition in my head. Yeah. Like I thought Doctor No was a blast. Yeah. Because like, oh Sean, back at it again. Yeah. Like it was. I just had a very different <laughs> mindset, so I appreciated. I guess things in a different way. Yeah, I would go back and watch quite a few of these movies, man. Actually, now that I'm sitting here, I gave this a five seven, correct? Yeah. And I also gave Thunderball a five seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is on the same level as Thunderball for me. Thunderball is a little better. I feel like the story in Thunderball was worlds better than this one. It's just the underwater combat was just like, oh my god. Underwater sucks. Especially in, like, that age of technology where you can't make it exciting. Dude, I'm gonna change mine to a 5-4, a five four, if I gotta yeah. be honest. Yeah, I'm going 5-4. He's yeah. going to have to make a whole new sheet. There's too many No, that's edits. okay. No, he's got it. He's got it. And then, did you say, you said you watched Russia with Love, right? Yeah. All right, we did do that one out of 10. What would you give Russia with Love out of 10? Uh, 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 <laughs> let's do, uh, let's do seven. Wow. Seven right. sounds like a fun time. I'm trying to think in my right. head. Three and a half. I give it a six five. Huh? I give it a six five. So I'm doing... I give that one a five. Again, Three point seven like... five out of five. So that means that would be 7.5 out of ten. If we were doing the ten scale. I definitely enjoyed Dr. No more. Yeah. Interesting. Can I see? I just want to reference how many more we got, man. We have... So we have Octopussy next. Yep. Right? Nice. And then... Is that uh, view a uh, view to a kill? View to I, a kill. I've abbreviated these because there's not a lot. I see. Of them. Okay, and then then we've got Austin. Two. Austin Powers. Yeah, the second yes, one. Because that'll be the last one. View to a kill is the last Roger. The Moore. last Roger Moore. Gotcha. So two more, man. Wow, 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 wow. Then we got two, uh, the Living Daylights and License to Kill. That's Timothy Dalton. And then we're gonna go ahead and get through Pierce Brosnan, the four. Gold Knights, Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough, Die Another Day, and then we'll do the third Austin Powers, and then we'll do the Daniel Craigs. Boom. And then we'll do a Bond recap. And uh, maybe we'll Are even they, they're doing write a, a script bond? for a co- Huh? They're doing a new Bond? I don't know. By the time we're done with these, I might have some news that's on that. Uh, I think that we'll yeah, probably right. at that point have like... Yeah, I mean, that's only one, like two, three, four, five, chick, six, right? seven, eight, nine, ten, We're about 11, due, 12, so. 13, yeah. 14, 15 more pods to do, so. It's 15 weeks. Yeah. yeah. So in 2025. Up, up in 2025, weeks. we will uh, have some answers for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay at, tuned. At the rate they're coming out, so yeah. I'm just saying, um, man, like, eventually something's going to. So, yeah, something's going to serve us, someone's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a whole thing. So, Albert Broccoli's grandson is out there snorting a mountain of cocaine right now. Just thinking about his ancestors. He's just like got a bloody nose, and he's like, you know what? I think James Bond. I'm gonna make him a fuck it. I'll make him a, a Filipino boy, <laughs> an eight year old. Yeah, fuck it. And he's still uh, fucking women. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? But like still- nobody, nobody addresses it. But like the actor is definitely an eight year old. But like. His character is still a grown ass man. Still has the He's energy. Like, shaken, yeah. Yeah. not stirred. Yeah. It's like, how old are you? Can you drink? No, no, but no. Like no, they no, have no, a no, sippy no, cup no. or like a you know yeah. sippy cup lid on top of the martini. It's like one of those one of those is there those kids cups that like there's just the little hole yeah in it so it's like you do the sip thing but, but like the, if it's hard it it it's knocked over it just drips out yeah and then like pours out yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the both, both, both hands like a safe sippy cup. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. Okay, All right, man. let's so uh, let's, uh, let's let's wrap uh, this thing up in a nice tight. Let's quit belt. beating this dead horse. Huh? Yeah, let's keep let's, let's yeah. quit beating this dead horse, huh? Yeah, let's quit beating this dead horse. <laughs> Sean would never say that. <laughs> You're right. It's like horsing around with a deadbeat. Yeah. All right, so we're on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If you're listening, uh, if you want to see that, it's not a real exciting. It's just us sitting in a room talking. Um, yeah, did but you know some that people are into that sort of thing. People are actually subscribed right now and not subscribed. That's when you can put the infographic that shows that 100 percent of people are not. Subscribed. Don't make me do that. <laughs> I mean, that'll be really easy. <laughs> It'll just show 100 percent not subscribed. You're right. You know what I mean? So, no, you're really. Uh, if you're watching, we're also we have audio. We have a big backlog of podcasts. Uh, we're on the Twitter at Content Crisis One, 
and you can email us and tell us uh, input, feedback, uh, criticism, whatever at Don't Content Crisis. Like, subscribe. Or Content Crisis Hotline Yahoo.com. Sorry, go ahead. My bad, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Like, subscribe, smash the bell icon. That's kind of the. Sorry, I always forget to like look at the actual camera, man. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I kind of like. I might do it for a second. Yeah, then like, I, then I'm kinda subscribe, like... smash the bell icon so that way uh, you can get notified. Uh, actually, just. Just like it. Let's, let's start with the My like. main thing is... Let's start with the like. If this just, was your favorite yeah. James Bond movies, or if you like this at all, please tell us why. Yeah. We, yeah! We are Send us entitled. a detailed email, and we will read that whole thing here. I promise you, we are entitled to that information, because maybe we're in the wrong... Yeah. We're... I doubt it. We want to get involved. Uh, yeah, I doubt but it. But I'm, I'm willing I'm to see I'm super open to being wrong. I'm not married life. to any opinion I have. Yeah. So these are all original opinions as well. We don't read. I don't read any reviews. Or I didn't like read. That. I. I don't that's read. the thing. If you sit there reading reviews about a movie, you're just fucking jaded by the time you get into it. So yeah. I mean, I'm just watching this. I'm telling yeah. you what the fuck I thought about. It. Yeah. So this movie sucked. This movie sucked fucking dead. sucked dick. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. We're Content watching. Content crisis for life. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>